Well, thank you for joining us tonight. <clears throat> I'm Anne Arundel County Executive Stuart Pittman, and um, we are here at People's Park in Annapolis mourning the death of 1,000 of our neighbors from COVID-19. I want to recognize a few of the people who are here before we get started. We have our police chief, Chief Amal Awad. We have <clears throat> Delegate Heather Bagnell with us. We have Councilwoman Lisa Rodvian, Council Chair Lisa Rodvian. We have from our amazing hospitals, Jason Carter, Chief Operating Officer of Baltimore Washington Medical Center. We have Jen Harrington, Chief Operating Officer of Luminous Health and Arundel Medical Center. Thank you for being with us. And then we are gonna hear from after me, we're gonna be hearing from uh, Ms. Nesrin Sonis, who lost her husband to COVID-19, from Pete Hill, who lost his sister to COVID-19, from Dr. Nilesh Kalyanaraman, our heroic health officer of Anne Arundel County, and from Pastor Gay Green Carden, the chair of the Anne Arundel County Interfaith Advisory Committee Commission. And then we are going to ring the bell 10 times, one for each 100 of our neighbors that we lost. 1,000 of us, 1,000 friends, 1,000 neighbors, 1,000 coworkers, 1,000 of our family. The first case was on March 11th, 2020. The first death was on March 27th, 2020. Last month, we lost over 100. We don't read their names in the paper as we do after a murder or a fallen soldier overseas. They die slowly, often away from their families, often in the presence of a nurse who holds their hand and sheds the first tear. We are here today to honor them, remember them, and mourn their loss. We are joined by some brave survivors, relatives who are left here with an empty place inside of them. Thank you for your bravery. Thank you for sharing with us some of the one you loved. We are also here to give thanks to give thanks to the heroic efforts put forth to save lives in our county. Our residents, our public servants, and absolutely our healthcare workers have refused to surrender to this virus. You have done extraordinary things, made extraordinary sacrifices to slow the spread. Your work has not been in vain. Because of you, our rate of death was half the rate of some Maryland counties. It's been your actions, your sacrifices that saved those other 1,000 lives. Please promise yourselves and let's promise each other that we will never surrender to this virus. We will never accept its attacks on our people. Life is precious and our humanity is defined by our dedication to protecting it. Whatever we have done in the past or failed to do, let's come together mourn the loss of our neighbors and work to protect those of us who remain. 
So the first brave survivor that I'm going to invite up is Miss Nezrin Sonas. Hi, everyone. I'm going to talk about a little bit COVID virus. I'm very nervous. I never done this speech before. Never, it's first time I'm going to do some speech, and also I do have some accent. I'm, sh I'm sure you guys are going to understand. I lost my loving husband. We were <coughs> married a little over twelve years. He died in five days. He went to hospital. We both got the COVID. This has happened March 2020, last week of the March. I was very sick. He wasn't very sick. He was like worried about me why I was very sick. And I had some fever, low grade fever going on. And also I was very tired and I lost my appetite and sense of a smell or a taste and something was going on, but I didn't know that. I thought I had a flu. And then next day he started complaining. He said, I throw up, I shortness of breath and a breathe and also some digestive problem. Then that breathing problems was getting unbearable. Then we call ambulance. Ambulance took him to it was March twenty fifth. He went to the hospital. Everything's fine and I spoke to him on the phone. He said he's in an emergency room. Nobody's in the hospital at that time. The next day, two days later, they said he's in, he's in coma. And so they said, go ahead and talk to him something, nice things for romantic times when you guys had together. It was Saturday. Then on Sunday, they called me again. They said, he's going. So you have to speak to him. He, he hears you, he understands you, but he cannot answer you. While I was talking to him, he passed. It was March 29th on Sunday, 136, and I lost my husband. He was, like I said, I was a little bit more than 12 years together, and I was single so many years. I was waiting for my soulmate. So I met my soulmate, unfortunately, didn't last more than 12 years. Um, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, he was, he was second generation of Greek, yes. And he was a science teacher. And he was also football coaching. And he was very handsome, very handsome man, yes. And so we bought the house in Annapolis. I mean, we had a very happy, beautiful life. He was my friends. He was my everything. He was my husband, my friend. So it just, it is devastating. When I lost him, it just unbearable sore I had. It just getting better, it's a little bearable, but it just so is gonna be impacting my heart and my life and I mean, I don't know what else to say. It, it just very, and I recover myself. Any family remembers. I have no family in Maryland. My fam, I'm from New Jersey. My husband's from Maryland, but for some reason his family didn't give any support. After he died, they're all split. They just, they're all disappeared. Anyway, I've been I'm trying to recover, and I just, it's been almost going to be two years and just I don't know what else to say just it's it's it wasn't easy it's not easy I just I prepare myself to say a lot of things I forgot I can't remember now so yeah well and also my mom was in the hospital too I lost two people actually in the same week but I accepted my mom because my mom was very sick and she was in the hospital already. She was 89. I accepted her because she was suffering from other conditions. But four days later, losing my husband, I couldn't accept it. I was devastating. So, and 
my social worker, Betty, she was calling me every week, so she's checking on me how I was always doing. I was saying a lot of nonsense things to her. So now, every time I remember what I said to her, it just like, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't me. Well, I don't know just what else I can say. Thank you. What is it? Oh, his name is Arthur Charles Sonnes. He was born in Albany, New York. When he was 16, 14 years old, they moved to Maryland because his father was a professor at one of the university. He taught in Boston University. He taught in uh, Maryland University. And the, the reason they moved to Maryland because of job situation, his parents, yes. When I met him, it was uh, 2008, a week later in Valentine's Day. So it was one of the church party or something. He approached to me, came up to me. He wanted to dance with me. I look at him, I said, you are too tall. I'm too short for you. And he said, it's okay, you're a beautiful girl. I don't mind. So. Yeah, we start dating. In a month, he gave me a ring, and he took me to his parents' house. And I went to his parents' house, which is there in heaven now. Actually, his father is a nursing home. His father, his mother passed away. They had a house in Colombia. We went to their house. I fell in love with them. He has beautiful parents, his mother, his father. And then, you know, it was like, then we got married in August. And it was happily ever. I mean, there is a lot to say what happened in between, but I cannot, you know, fit in all this time. Yeah. So yeah. So I don't know what else to say. I know. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And also, my background is from. I'm from. I'm a Christian. I'm Armenian. My husband's a Greek, as I said. Uh, raised and born in Turkey. Like, Turkey is mostly a uh, uh, Muslim country. But what happened is the genocide, 1915 to 1917, World War I. So what they did, they did the genocide. Um, the, you know, they, even my, uh, my great-grandparents got killed. We are the survivor from that genocide. So that's it, uh, yeah. You. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and now we're going to hear from our friend Pete Hill, who is also the director of our Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion in the county. Good evening, everybody. I want to thank the county executive for giving me the opportunity to share with you just a few brief thoughts about COVID-19. From this day forward, I will always remember the number 619. That is the time that I was notified that my big sister Vivian Hill had passed away from COVID-19. She passed away because like many of our fellow citizens in the United States, she chose to believe that she did not need a vaccine. And what I would say to each and every one of you this evening, that like my sister, I would ask you to try to understand that you got to follow the science. Vivian Hill believed in conspiracy theories. Vivian Hill, my sister, did not want to believe her own doctors. And what finally happened to Vivian Hill was she ultimately died because she falsely believed the things she heard on YouTube, on Facebook, and Twitter. The last thing my sister Vivian reportedly said before she left this world was get that vaccine. Like many Americans who found themselves in a similar position, they regretted the decisions they made about that vaccine. And so if you remember nothing else I say this evening, I caution each of you 
If you haven't been vaccinated, please get vaccinated. If you have family members who, like my sister, chose to believe everybody but the people who have been trained to understand viruses, talk to them. I wish I had more time to talk to my sister Vivian. I do not. But if you have more time to talk to your family members, I urge you, I beseech each of you, do what we failed to do. Persuade your family members that despite all that they may hear, follow the science. And our health officer, Dr. Nilesh Kalyana Raman. Good evening. All of us have been affected by this pandemic. COVID has changed our daily rhythms. It's made us sick. And tragically, today we recognize the 1,000 people who have lost their lives to COVID in this county. Each person who died left behind children, parents, and even grandparents who mourn their passing. Each person, though lost, continues to be loved by their family and friends. And everyone who dies leaves a tear in the fabric of our communities. In recognizing this loss, we also take a moment to recognize the efforts of those working on the front lines to protect our communities from COVID. Healthcare workers in our hospitals who have cared for patients, consoled loved ones, and have done so every single time that we have asked. Public health staff who have vaccinated in our schools answered the calls of those who were infected and strove to keep up with the twists and turns of the pandemic to guide the public and county staff who have opened shelters, provided food, kept people housed, and found a way to reach those who needed their help. The importance of your service has been amplified beyond measure during this pandemic. So many more people are alive today because of your efforts. You've had to continuously reach for your best selves and extend that self to others. You've done this while dealing with the challenges of COVID in your personal life as well. But this has taken its toll on you, and I want to recognize that. Know that your efforts matter. As we move forward, we will continue to be there for each other. Today is a reminder of why we fight COVID, why we must continue to protect ourselves and our loved ones each and every day. Thank you. Finally, before we hear the bell, we have Pastor Gay Green Carden. Let's give our county exec a great hand praise for just organizing this great visual tonight in memory of those who have lost loved ones. So on behalf of the Interfaith Advisory Council, we extend our deepest condolences to all those who have lost loved ones. And we realize that the challenges and emotional difficulties may be very hard. And we can't say what they're experiencing right now. But one thing we can say is we are a community of faith-based leaders who are willing to go the extra mile to reach each one. We heard the stories, we feel their pain, and we realize that we too can stand as a community in Anne Arundel County. We realize that this virus is deadly. But one thing for sure, as we think about the light in this visual, remember your loved ones and have their light continue to shine in your hearts and let it shine all across the community of this great county, Anne Arundel County. Thank you, and our hearts are with each one of you.
Thank you. And let us go forth and never surrender to this virus. Thank you for being here.